So hello everyone. Um, what better thing to do on a cold winter day in Colorado than to make some platonic solids. And so this is what I'm going to do is in this very brief lecture, um, I will just show you how to make one particular solid uh, called the octahedron, which has eight triangular sides. And the, the purpose here isn't really just to make an octahedron, but it's, it's really to give you some pointers and show you how to make really any solid. Uh, so I'm going to, as we go, I'm going to show you some of the tips that I've learned over the years of making these solids that, that can make it quite successful. So let me show you first some examples here. So this is, you can see here, this is my trunk. Uh, I have a couple of these trunks of all these different solids. So to begin with, perhaps it would be helpful for you to see um, actually what an octahedron looks like. It has eight triangular faces, as I said before. The first thing I'm doing is I'm using uh, paper that is needs to be fairly good. So this is just uh, a standard file folder. It's probably not the best, but it's certainly very adequate for the purpose of our work today. And uh, you can also get 80 pound, uh, what's called cover paper from a store. It needs to be stiff enough so that when we put it together, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be too floppy or really fold in or wrinkle. Uh, and if it's too thick, it won't work either because then it's really hard to make the folds uh, nice and crisp. An octahedron is certainly gonna be comprised of eight of these triangles. Each triangle needs to be equilateral. And I just started here with a line that's going to be the length of the edge that I need. Um, I'd probably recommend three and a half inch long edges. This is a little bit smaller for my purposes here. And so to make a perfect, I need to start with what I call a form. The form I'm going to cut out and then out of that form, I'm gonna copy it eight times in order to make the triangle that I need. And so I'm just measuring with the compass here out the length of the line that I want and I make one arc from each side and this is how to construct an equilateral triangle. Uh, this form needs to be quite perfect. And so now I just need to get out my scissors and cut that out. This original form is going to be copied eight times. And so if it's not correct, then certainly the end resulting net and the final resulting paper model just won't quite work out. And so here's my form. And again, this is the shape in the case of an octahedron. Uh, it is going to be this same triangle that's going to be copied eight times. And so now we're going to go ahead and go through that process. And in this case, I recognize that I can just copy this um, along this line. So, and this won't work for everything. Like when you do a dodecahedron, which is 12 pentagons, uh, you're not going to have so much straight lines, but I look for this sort of for this sort of symmetry in the form because it can be very helpful. And I put the form there and I simply am going to copy this as carefully as I can a total of eight times. Okay, there we are. It turned out that I didn't need this extra line here. And of course, these eight triangles needed to be arranged in a certain way such that it would fold up and form the octahedron quite perfectly. Um, I should also acknowledge that for this particular solid, there are other ways that I could have done this without taking a form and cutting it. Um, and I'm not gonna get into that right now. It's especially useful to do that when you do the icosahedron, which has 20 triangles. Um, but in, in this case, again, I'm trying to demonstrate for you what you would have to do for even more complicated solids, such as a dodecahedron or things like the rhombic triacontahedron that has 30 uh, rhombuses, or diamonds, so that I have to copy, I'd have to make a form that would be a rhombus and copy that 30 times in a particular way. Uh, so to do that very carefully would be really helpful. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I am going to plan out where the tabs need to be. And so a tab is going to be, once I glue this together, for instance, this 
face here, this triangular face here needs to come together with this. So this edge is gonna come together with this and I'm just gonna kind of map it out in this way. This is often what I do. Uh, this edge is gonna come together with this one. I'm just doing this in pencil. It's totally fine. And if you see it correctly like this, this edge will come together with this, this edge will come together with this. And now what other edge is missing? Well, this edge here is going to come together all the way over here. And this will allow me to plan where to put my tab. So make, by making these arrows, this is gonna help a great deal. And every place where two edges come together, there needs to be one tab. And what I'm going to do here also, and this is actually very important, I'm gonna plan on which my, when I glue it together, what is going to be the last face, what is going to be the actual final face that will come down together. And I wanna make sure that face does not have any tabs attached to it. And I could choose any of these four. I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna remind myself by writing the word last here. And then I am going to go ahead and mark the tabs, which one that I want to have tabs. And so I'll just write a little T where the tab will be. And so I'll put a T here. There certainly needs to be a T here. Again, this face here, I'm not gonna have a tab on it attached to either this side or this, but what it's going to do, that's gonna be the last face that gets glued. So I'm planning that now. Um, again, this face, this edge here, comes together with that. So one of those two need to have a tab. It doesn't really matter which one, I'll do that. And then I'll put a tab here or there, one or the other. It would not be good to have a tab along both of these edges because you don't wanna glue a tab to another tab. This tab is gonna be glued to the inside of this right here. And then I'll put a tab here. And I think, now let me see, each arrow should have one T on one side or the other and it seems to have that. And so now it's good. So now the next thing I'm going to do is cut out. If you wanted to, you could draw the tabs. I could sit here and draw this, but it's unnecessary because we, it doesn't need to be exact because that's gonna be inside the solid. So I could draw all these, but this is completely unnecessary to do this. It may be helpful for you just to see that plan. And notice that these tabs, the way I'm drawing it, go all the way along the length of the edge. And now I need to very, very carefully cut it out. So now that I have finished cutting it out, uh, I now need to do probably what is the most important thing, and that is to make really good folds. And this is what many people don't do properly and it creates all kinds of problems. So I'm gonna show you how to do proper folds. Uh, and to just mention it as well, this is gonna be the inside of the octahedron. I'm actually gonna do my artwork on the opposite side, but I need to fold it first so I can see the edges properly. And for example, here's what I'm going to do. Notice I get my finger underneath where I'm going to fold. I put my ruler along the edge and then I slowly work my fingers going back and forth here to start to fold this up with my fingernail underneath there. And then I'm gonna fold this down, having the triangle fit exact, see how this triangle is gonna fit exactly onto this one. And then I take my fingernail and I go over it a few times like that. And so that's gonna make it a nice sharp fold, which is gonna make a big difference in how it comes together. I'm also gonna do that with the edge here. Here where, where the tab is, again, having my finger go back and forth, working slowly towards there, bringing the fold up. And then the most important part is pushing that down and going over with my fingernail back and forth to make that a very sharp, clean fold. And you can already see on the other side how these folds are forming very nicely. Continue to do this all the way around. And now all my folds are complete. So now I'm gonna turn it over. And now what I can do is go over, this is what I like to do. So I'm gonna go over all of the lines in black ink because it makes it very nice to see. It's gonna make it so now when I do my artwork, 
Uh, it gives me some, some boundaries to do my coloring in with. And then it also, I think, makes the final form look nice. It really shows the outline of the form. Not totally necessary, but a nice thing. And now what I'm going to do is color in the solid in a nice, beautiful way. A lot of students that I know, they'll put a different sort of drawing or theme on every single side that can take a lot of time. But if they enjoy doing that, why not? This is just one particular style that, that I have really come to do quite a bit. So now I've finished fully coloring this in. Notice I did not color in my tabs. There's a little tab here. I don't know if you can see that. I, there's no reason to color in the tabs because the tabs are going to go underneath. Now the only thing left to do is to glue it together. And let's remind ourselves, remember this one here? This is the last one. So I'm going to make sure that I glue that last. I don't want to glue that first and then glue this and then end up taking these two pyramids and gluing them together. That's not going to work. So I really need to plan around this idea that this is the last face. So let's start to glue it together. I'm going to go from the other end because that's last and I'm going to start to be gluing here. So there's a little pile of little pool of glue here and I'm just going to use a toothpick and I don't want to get too much glue on there. I would never use tape, by the way, right? And I don't use a glue gun or anything like that. And I just apply a little bit of glue, doesn't have to be much, onto the edge. And then I bring the edge over. And then the important thing is I hold it with my fingers. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put it down on the table like this. So you can see that. And then I, I apply pressure like this with my fingers. And then you count to about 60 seconds, a full minute, just to be safe. Now my solid is glued everywhere, except for that last face. And again, notice this, the last face here does not have any tabs on it, attached to it, but it's going to come down like this and it's going to be glued onto two tabs. And by the way, I should mention this, if you forgot a tab, so imagine this tab wasn't here. I could cut out a little piece of paper, glue it on to this face here in, in preparation for this last face coming down. That's actually quite manageable. So uh, to do this last face, I do make sure the tabs are kind of pushed up a little bit. Not, I don't want them down uh, basically going inside because this is just gonna be held there like that. So a little bit of upward pressure is actually helpful. So now that the glue is there, all I'm going to do, and, and generally this last face, it's possible to just place it on the table here and then just to hold it down. And again, we have to be really patient and just hold it here probably for two minutes, this last face. Even sometimes go and put a book on top of it just to give it a little bit of weight and just leave it there for a few minutes. That would be fine. And so now that the two minutes is up, we can just remove that. And if we look around here again, it's very hard to see which edges were glued and which edges were actually just folded. And I try to imagine that there's no space, there's no way, and this is actually true, there's no way that a very small bug could climb inside my octahedron if I did this right. So there's my demonstration here. I hope that you found some of that helpful and I hope that you have much success in making your own paper models. Some of them undoubtedly more complicated than just this. I just wanted to start with a fairly easy one to give you some tips to be helpful. Thank you very much for listening and I wish you a good rest of the day.